One Micronesia podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Half a day and welcome to another episode of the One Micronesia podcast. And in this one, we get to sit down with another host of another amazing podcast, which pretty much has, it covers anything and everything Pacifica. So I'm here with uh, the host of Memoirs Pacifica, Mr. Tony Asios. Uh, Tony, again, thank you so much. I know, uh, you know, you're such a busy man, uh, but you did take time to uh, join us here on the One Micronesia podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, this is great. So, uh, Tony, uh, real quick intro. Just tell the people, you know, uh, what you do and, and, and stuff like that. Okay, so I am the producer and host of a documentary-style podcast that discusses, um, uh, explores events, social movements, and people in modern Micronesia, uh, including the Marianas Archipelago. Episodes range from about 20 minutes, 20 minutes to... Uh, our longest so far is about uh, a little over an hour. And actually our most recent episode uh, is a two-parter. <laughs> wow. About 45, about 45 minutes each. Yeah, and so as the host and producer, um, you know, in my host capacity, I basically just give a short intro about 90 seconds in the beginning, just kind of summarizing like uh, what we'll be talking about, uh, the, the issue that we'll be exploring and who will be our anchor, the person kind of guiding us through it um and then at the very end uh, i pop back in and talk a little bit about our next episode and you know where you can find us on social media all that kind of stuff um uh but so the vast majority of my work is really actually done behind the scenes um helping out to record and uh in some cases to conduct uh interviews and i'm doing a lot of the editing and i'm working with uh, anchors to recruit anchors, folks who are from the region, um, folks who are rooted in the Marianas and in Micronesia to sort of take the lead in the actual uh, storytelling, the history telling, so to speak. Um, and uh, yeah, and so we cover issues in modern Micronesian history, and we define that roughly as post-World War II. Uh, and there's a lot of really interesting history from this region that occurs before World War II, but the reason why we're really focused on modern Micronesian history is because a really big part of this show is interviewing uh, people who s witnessed or somehow participated in the event that we're discussing. And so that requires generally for them to be alive. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, we've had anywhere from as few as three interviewees to as many as seven or eight on some episodes. And so um, unlike your format where it's you know, just sort of we, we hit record, go all the way through and have a free flowing conversation. These are a bunch of interviews conducted at different times, different locations over the course of days or even weeks. And then we take it into the editing room. Uh, you know, we transcribe the interviews and really from there start shaping a sort of radio documentary, so to speak. What made you want to start something like this? Well, I guess there's a few ways to answer that. One, uh, I come from a reporting and documentary filmmaking background. Mm -hmm. um, I went to film school, got an MFA at American University in documentary film production, and had spent um, several years before that as a print and sometimes a print reporter and sometimes photojournalist. Um, and so I, I, you know, and I'm just sort of like a history nerd. Uh, I, uh, and, and so I, want to learn more about this island that I've uh, made my home. I've lived here since 2016. And so I've read a lot of books, um, but I really do a lot of consuming my media and history through um, podcasts and documentary films. And it was, uh, I was struggling to find many that really dove deeply into historical topics, um, especially made by people who are from the region and interviewing people, getting a local voices involved. Because a lot of the stuff that I'd find that was about the history of this region was always about World War II. And it was always told from the perspective of the US military and how um, Guaham and the Northern Marianas are you know, the tip of the spear and their, um, their value as uh, a military asset. But very rarely did we go, did, was I able to find um, documentaries uh, especially podcast documentaries that really dove deeper into other types of topics that weren't just about, you know, the Enola Gay and Tinian uh, or um, the, the uh, Japanese occupation, right? Um, not that those aren't interesting stories, but I wanted to broaden the horizons of uh, what co constitutes good and interesting uh, historical topics to cover that aren't just about war. 
That said, some of our topics, we do address World War II um, in several of the episodes, but we don't really fixate on it. Those are just, we sort of lay, provide some historical context, help lay the scene of how we came to the, you know, the event that really we're focused on, which might be in the 1970s or 80s. Wow. Um, yeah, and then so I started applying for, uh, <laughs> and you know, another funny part of the story of how I came to do this is uh, there's a documentary style podcast that I listen to a lot. They actually play it on KPRG. It's uh, called, it, BBC produces it. It's called Witness History. And um, I think they do a, a great job of incorporating archival audio and they find really great interviewees. And um, I was like, oh, you know, I would like to, I would like to produce some of these. So I reached out to their, um, to the, the show's director and said, hey, I come from, you know, a documentary background. I have a journalism background. I've done some radio stories. Uh, would you be interested in hearing some pitches for some stories from this region? Uh, because I've noticed, you know, they cover stories from all over the world, India, Brazil, England, North America, you know, everywhere. And, but very, very little from uh, the Pacific and nothing from Micronesia. Uh, and so I said, hey, you know, you've got this huge chunk of the globe that's being left out from your excellent reporting and storytelling. Um, maybe I could help and uh, no answer. And so I followed back up two or three weeks later and I said, no, really, I've got some interesting stuff to pitch to you. Um, and I've got the chops to put it together. And they were back and they said, yeah, sorry, not interested. That it's just too remote of an area. I'm not sure our listeners would be interested. And so, you know, I think they're wrong. And so I said, you know what, fine, uh, let's just make our own. <laughs> let's just build this from the ground up. And so I applied for some grants from Humanities Guahan, from Caja, and from the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. And uh, so, yeah, they're instrumental in making, bringing this to fruition. Talk about some of the content uh, that you've covered. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I can just go right through them. I'll try to keep it brief because uh, I, 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 during these interviews, sometimes I get carried away and I spend 10 minutes describing <laughs> one episode. I don't want to do that to your listeners. I want them to listen. But episode one is called Christmas Odyssey in Vietnam. And uh, that tells the story of when uh, Governor, governor Carlos Camacho, at this point, he wasn't Guam's first elected governor. He was Guam's last appointed governor. So this was before home rule really took effect on, on Guam. But in 1969, during the Christmas of 1969, he went to go visit uh, Chamorro troops that were uh, stationed in Vietnam and fighting in Vietnam. And this was done at a time, this isn't such a rare thing anymore for um, a member of Congress or maybe a mm -hmm. governor to go visit troops in Afghanistan or Iraq, right? Um, but in 1969, this was re really just not a thing that, that happened. And um, for Carlos Camacho to go and do that, he visited seven different sites spread across Vietnam. And, um, and he, they had fiestas with the Chamorro troops. Um, they, brought, they traveled with uh, Johnny Sablan, who would perform live for them. And it was just, you know, it was this really innovative thing to be doing at the time. And it meant, and more important than that, it really meant a lot to uh, the, they call them the boys from Guam. That's the term that they used to describe them back then. But these boys from Guam who were, you know, in a very violent, dangerous place, separated from family, but to have their governor come and visit and they would prepare, they would do whatever they could to scrap and <laughs> beg, borrow and steal from uh, the dining halls to put together some red rice, some keleguin, some seafood, something to make it feel a little bit more like home for a day. And, um, and so, so that episode covers that story and we get to hear from uh, people who were traveling with uh, the, now, the late Governor Camacho on that trip. Um, and hear their memories and interpretations of things. And then we also hear from one of the uh, soldiers who was visited and actually played a big role in helping facilitate this for the governor. Um, and of course we hear bits and pieces of Johnny Sablon's uh, famous song, Christmas Odyssey in Vietnam, mm -hmm. which tells that story in and of itself in his, in his way. Um, so that one is anchored by uh, Dr. Michael Luhan Bavakwa. Uh, but, you know, Tony, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with more of the podcast. When we come back, we're going to go into uh, talk about a uh, roundtable that happened last week. Talk about some of the, the issues and the things that were discussed during the roundtable. So all of that after this break. You're watching the One Micronesia podcast. It's being brought to you by Dokomo Pacific. It's better together.
It only gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Half a day and we are back. One Micronesia podcast and we're still here with uh, the host of the Memoirs Pacifica podcast, Tony Azizos. Uh, as CEOs, as CEOs, right? Tony Azizos. All right, there you go. Uh, so, Tony, man, we talked about the podcast, how it all started. Uh, we, we, you went into details of the first two episodes, which pretty is awesome to, to know, you know, that um, a documentary style podcast, podcast is out there and it's telling the story of Micronesia. That's awesome. And thank you so much for doing so, uh, because not, you know, not a lot of people have, you know, done so. I mean, we have other podcasts, but not like this, not like not, not like a documentary style, which is pretty awesome to me so um, yeah, no, we have so many good podcasts uh coming from this region and uh yours is one of them i gave you a shout out in our uh in our roundtable event that we had uh just last week i you know, gave you as an example of somebody who's uh really doing good work in the podcast space out here oh thank you so thank, thank you, you. like yeah and like I, I told i even told them um, the I, my guest from last week you know i told her like you know uh we're all doing this. It's it's all a it's all a collective thing, you know. It's it's not just one or two. It's just everybody doing the same, the doing their part. And I think it's okay, it's really thousands, like, tens of thousands of really good stories to tell and experiences to share from this region. And yeah, and we we all just kind of help <laughs> tell right. a little bit of it, and collectively, maybe it makes a difference. All right, so uh, Tony, let's talk about you did mention that roundtable that you guys had last week. Uh, let's talk about some of the the things that were discussed. Sure. It was called Modern Micronesian History Through Podcast, a virtual roundtable and Q&A. Um, and uh, so that was a moderated roundtable. Our moderator was uh, Manny Luhan Cruz, um, a, also a familiar voice from this region, a re reporter. And he just finished up his PhD in New Zealand. And now he's teaching, uh, I believe, uh, media and journalism at University of Guam. Other panelists were other people who have served as, well, just some of the folks who have served as anchors for some of these memoir Specifica episodes. I've actually already mentioned both of them, uh, Miguel Babacua and mm -hmm. Vivian Damas. Um, so, uh, and then myself as the producer. And uh, so we, man, it was a two hour event. Uh, we had good attendance. We had a audience Q&A at the end and we had a lot of questions and good questions too. Um, so it was, yeah, it was really exciting. And essentially we just kind of, you know, we talked a lot about memoir specifica, but I didn't want to limit it to just that. Um, this wasn't just shameless self-promotion. I really wanted to have a conversation about the podcast space in areas, um, having to do with Micronesian history, as well as current affairs and other topics. Right. Um, and so we had, uh, Vivian on, because as I mentioned, a, a host of Beyond the Fence on KPRG. And then uh, Miguel Bavacqua is the current host of the Fanatsu podcast, and they cover history and current events and all sorts of things. And then uh, Manny Cruz was the founder and the original host of Fanatsu. Um, so yeah, we just, you know, we got to talk about that podcast space in general and uh, the, the, the benefits and drawbacks and how it can help to amplify, amplify uh, Pacific Islander voices, because in many ways, the um, barrier to entry is much lower than it used to be. If you wanted to, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if you wanted to have a radio show, or if you wanted to have, uh, you know, a, a column in the PDN or whatever your local paper is, um, it was much more difficult. And there are a lot of gatekeepers, <laughs> but it's not so hard anymore. And with a pretty small budget, uh, you can, and just some simple uh, tools, you can have a successful podcast and you can get your perspective out. You can tell the stories you want to tell the way you want to tell it. And that's a very liberating thing, I think, for a lot of people in this region who have had their story told, uh, if it's told at all. It's very often told by outsiders uh, and doesn't necessarily include local voices. You know, and I say that as somebody who's very self-aware that I'm, um, I'm a settler. 
uh, I haven't lived here that long, but as I said in the first part, of, uh, you don't really even hear from me that very much in this show. I'm mostly kind of I, what I've most what the way I envision is I've created a platform and I invite other people who are experts uh, on the region to come and sort of take the lead. Uh, but yeah, we could, those are just that's just a quick overview of some of the things that we talked about during the panel. And um, yeah, as far as I can tell, it was a success. Even though we ran 30 minutes long, most of the people stayed on uh, and listened all the way through. And that, that, that seems like a good sign to me. <laughs> what were some of the uh, most asked questions um, towards the end there? You talked about a, a Q&A. So what were, what were some of the, the most asked questions or concerns from, from the, the people in attendance? That's a good, you know, so uh, I kind of just covered one of them. And one of them was to talk about what is it, what do podcasts uh, provide for uh, storytellers today? Like what, what, what one person asked, um, and I think it was directed at me as the documentary filmmaker, although I know Miguel and Vivian have also played roles in documentary films as well. But, um, <clears throat> but it was, what are the benefits of telling your story through a film, telling it and creating a documentary film versus a documentary podcast? Um, so I, um, and you know, I think that, man, we, we, all, we all went off on that one, but I think it kind of came down to, that uh, not only is it more accessible, like I was just talking about, um, mm -hmm. it's even though camera equipment has become far, far cheaper than it used to be. And now with YouTube, you know, you don't have to have a partner with a broadcaster or get a distributor and all these things that take time and money and connections. You can just throw it up on YouTube or TikTok even, <laughs> depending on how long your story is. Um, um, so while that's more accessible, it's still, you're dealing with many senses at the same time, right? You have to tell a, a strong, compelling visual story. You also have to have the good audio. Um, and these are different skill sets. And, um, as even though it's far cheaper than it used to be, it's still expensive to get good cameras, good lenses, good audio equipment. Um, and then it takes a lot in my experience, it takes a lot longer to edit together a good documentary video or film, um, than it does to just focus on audio and really tell it like that. Um, and you, it gives you some interesting like creative options too. Um, so we, we all elaborated on that and talked about how this is a way of broadcasting your story um, on, a, on a budget, on, on, a, on a small budget. Um, and then, you know, there are, there are questions about representation and how you can ethically tell um, a whole region's or an island's history and that we were asked by the moderator, what, what steps did we take to do this in a reciprocal way and in an ethical way? And a lot of that was about being in, you know, staying in constant touch with them and really trying to make sure that uh, we are telling their story honestly and accurately doing a lot of fact, fact checking. But also even if we came in as the producer and the anchors, even if we came in with a conception or an opinion on the topic, when we're talking to people who might've had a, you know, they live this stuff. Mm -hmm. And if they have a very different interpretation, we try to be true to them and make sure that their version of the Vietnam War, for example, is also included, even if my interpretation of it might be very different. We come from different generations. We had different experiences. And hey, you know what? They were actually there. <laughs> so uh, that's part of what we talked about is how do you balance, you know, to being an uh, advocacy versus uh, straight reporting and telling it and while all telling a compelling story that the interview interviewee will listen to it later and say yeah that that sounds honest to what I told them even if we have other competing voices from other interviewees who might have their own memory of what happened that day you know what I mean awesome awesome all right uh Tony we're gonna take a break and we're back to talk about upcoming events you know and I know there's a lot I know this is I know there's more more episodes coming and and more roundtables to come. So we'll talk more about that. That's coming up in just a little bit, guys. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back. You're watching the One Micronesia Podcast, being brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. It only gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, 
we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Clowns made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Hot day, and we're back. One Micronesia podcast. We brought to you by Dokumo Pacific. All right, so we're still here with the host of the Memoris Pacifica podcast, Mr. Tony. Uh, wow, we talked about how it all started, how it's going. Talk about the round table. Amazing uh, feedback from that one. So let's talk about what's 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 next uh, for Memoris Pacifica. Let's talk about events. Talk about episodes. Yeah, we don't have any more sort of roundtable events. That was kind of a one-off thing. Mm-hmm. Um, glad we did it, though. Uh, what we do have, though, is upcoming episodes. Um, last week, we released part one of a two-part episode. Uh, that episode is about um, uh, the revival of traditional seafaring in the Marianas. Wow. And how that was achieved through the help of Carolinian navigators. Um, and that really that whole process really began... You could argue maybe in the late seventies, but really, especially for the Marianas in the, uh, did I say the late eighties? I meant late seventies, but really in the Marianas in the eighties. Um, and so we speak to some of the folks who were there from day one on that, and we get to hear from uh, master navigators from some of the coral atolls of of Chuuk and Yap who have been instrumental in this. So part one was released last week. Part two should be released um, hopefully by this weekend. I don't know. Still catching up on some aspects of it still in the mix, putting in some music and stuff. Um, uh, But yeah, and then we'll have another episode later in November. Um, That's sort of the final episode for season one. And um, what we're doing for that is kind of uh, going through all the previous six episodes that happened before. And I'm going to include little bits and pieces, parts of interviews that I really liked a lot, but didn't quite make the cut. Um, for either because it was a little off topic or it just didn't really fit in the flow of how we put the stories together, but they're still just really cool or interesting or, or emotional, compelling things that people had to say. Some of it's just funny. Some of it just cracks me up every time I hear it. Uh, so I want to, yeah, I'm going to put together just, it's not a bloopers episode, but it's like, it's like um, the, the outtakes, things that we weren't able to include that I, I want the listeners to listen to because I think that they would find cool as well. Um, so that should be out by the very end of November. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to dig through. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll do a quicker version of just, just to let people know what's out there. Episode three is on Operation New Life when, uh, for a brief period in the mid seventies, when um, Guam hosted roughly 112,000 refugees uh, from Vietnam. And we get to hear from some, some of those refugees and people who are involved. Episode four is about the whole process of how the Northern Marianas became the Commonwealth how they crafted a covenant, how that whole process began. And we get to hear from really the the framers, the founders of the CNMI and hear it from their perspective. And then finally, episode five, which came out in June uh, for Pride Month, it talks about marriage equality and LGBTQ rights on Guam. And we hear from folks that uh, listeners here will surely know like BJ Cruz and Josh Tenorio, and then some other longtime activists in the region like Lacia Casillo, and, and the list goes on. But, uh, you know, it's really centered around how Guam became the first U.S. territory Mm -hmm. to achieve same-sex marriage. But uh, we go we go back decades and really kind of lay the scene about that whole movement and where we are today. Um, So hopefully at least one of those topics is interesting to your listeners and they'll uh, come check it out. All right, guys, we're going to take a break and we'll be back for the last part of the podcast, a little message. And then also Tony will tell you where you can go find Memoir Specifica, the podcast. We'll be back after this. It only gets better with more. Customize and save with the fastest internet speeds in the Marianas by adding mobile, phone, and TV to your bundle with Business Bundles Plus. Docomo Pacific Business. Work better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Clowns made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. 
hot today, and we are back. One Micronesia podcast, and this is the last part. We've, we, he literally told us the story around memoir specific of the podcast. What an awesome story. Talked about the round table. That was awesome. Talked about upcoming, uh, upcoming episodes and, 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 and topics that he'd like to cover once kind of this COVID thing settles. Uh, so Tony, uh, real quick, before we uh, close out here, a little message to uh, your, your, your listeners on your podcast or, or, or this podcast, people are watching right now. Uh, what would you tell them? Yeah, it, well, I mean, I would like to thank anyone who's tuned in for even one episode, especially those who've tuned in for several. Uh, you know, we've had some really nice comments on social media and on Apple, Apple Podcasts. We've had some really nice, you know, especially from people who are part of the diaspora. That's something that's been nice for me and the people I work with to see. It's a lot of folks who are like out in Nebraska, California, Hawaii, whatever. <clears throat> Maybe they're in school or their family left uh, the region a while ago, but they say, Man, this is so nice to listen to. This has been my. Uh, this has been such a an emotional show for me, and I and I look forward to each new episode. And so that's that's been something that's really nice for me. For so for all those folks out there uh, who are part of the diaspora who are listening, I really appreciate that as well. Um, and for anyone who hasn't listened yet, go check out memoirspecifica.com. In this case, Pacifica is spelled with an S and a K. P A S I F I K A, and uh, you can stream all the episodes. There, you can check out the archival material that supplements the episodes, or um, you can also find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, um, even YouTube and Spotify, things like that. So we're available on a lot of the major streaming sites. All right. Well, Tony, again, thank you so much for the time. I uh, definitely enjoyed the talk. Uh, literally giving me uh, a, a view and me and the listeners of what your podcast is about uh, each and every episode. And like I said, uh, you talked about episode one, episode two, I'm already hooked after this. I'm just going to jump in, uh, close my office, put the, the <laughs> don't disturb uh, sign, uh, sign on and just listen to it. Like I said, the first one, the second one was just, you know, a way to kick it off with those stories. It's amazing. And again, thank you for your time here on the podcast as well. Thank you, sir, ma'am. Let's talk again sometime. All right. We are. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes uh, another episode of the One Micronesia Podcast. We'll catch you guys on the next one. The One Micronesia Podcast is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together.